Why won't my Hoya grow? That is the number one question I get asked in comments and in emails. So I have three of my own here today to show you. We'll keep this short and sharp. One, normal, slow growth. Maybe we'll start with that because that's the positive one. <laughs> uh, I have another one that I'm pretty certain the roots are trash from dry rot could be my fault, but we don't finger point on this channel, you know that. And then I have a third one that I'm actually uh, quite concerned about. So we'll get into that one last, just in case there is a pest issue. Stick with me. Hey guys, it's Dave. Today we have a specific focus on our Hoya problem. So I'm going to take some things for granted with yours if it's not growing. I'm going to assume it's getting adequate light that you're watering it, that you're not letting the leaves turn to tissue, that you're feeding it appropriately, and that it has favorable room conditions for your particular species or cultivar. My Svetlana has suffered, has suffered some cold damage. Um, I had, Jesus, okay. <laughs> okay, so what we're looking at for your plant that is not growing is it looks healthy, pest-free, and it's met those other requirements. Actually, backing up to the pest one, I shouldn't just skip over that one. Mealybugs you're going to see on your plant. Can't miss that if you give it even a cursory inspection when you water it. Flat mites you'll know without a microscope because they're gonna eat the new growth and you're gonna have nubby, uh, what would you call it, like cauliflower looking nubs. Um, browned down. New growth will keep trying to come out and it'll keep getting chewed down. Let's rule that out. Spider mites, you'll know from looking at the top of the leaf, even though that's not where they're probably going to be, because you'll start seeing that leaf deform as the spider mites suck the sap out of it. When you look closely at the underside of that leaf, you'll see a brown rash, little tiny dots. It may have a reddish cast to it. Um, Spider mites are easier to deal with than what I have been dealing with uh, earlier this summer and what has me concerned about one of the plants down here. Um, just a note about when one leaf dies, a pest problem can start on just that one leaf. So if somebody says to me or sends me a picture, this leaf is dying, is the plant okay? I am not so quick just to say, old leaves die if it's just one leaf don't worry about it because spider mite problems happen towards the base of the plant generally and it can start with just one leaf so if you like to leave those yellowing leaves on the plant i do not like to do that i just don't like to look at them for one thing at least look at the underside of that leaf very carefully and the leaves surrounding it to make sure that it's not the start of an infestation okay Back to the topic at hand. I bought this magnificent one leaf cutting of the KSB-01 very late this summer. I have another much larger plant now that I purchased earlier in the summer. I love this thing so very much that I'm going to grow out as many of these as I can to help share next year. What may not come off too, too clearly on camera is that margin. Now these leaves stay very bright green no matter what light you give them. Well if you give them very very bright light they turn rose actually but it's a very deep maroon black margin and that's not what the point of this video is but I can't help but brag about this. I mean this is mm, 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 mm. but anyway it was in a thimble size cup and it didn't have like the most amazing roots, but it had decent enough roots. So I put it in, everything okay, dog? Are we, are we doing all right? Okay. Um, I put it in this four inch cup and it is putting some roots out and so forth, but it looked to me like it had just been kind of sitting there. It came with this growth it didn't even really look alive now something and sometimes that happens so if when in doubt 
you can always it was cut up at the very top here right there you can always take just the slightest little snip of that if you want to see that vine health you can take a pin prick along the vine and see if the sap comes out you know you may not be seeing anything at the nodes so in this case it's just taking its time because let's see if we can get this on camera let's see if i can even find it there it is by my finger we have a brand new growth point so that is fantastic right there and then we have some growth happening let's see get that oriented properly right there and right there so that is encouraging this plant is doing its thing I'm going to leave it alone I'm happy with that this is one of those examples that we've sort of been brainwashed to believe that all Hoya take forever to get going when they've been transplanted sometimes they do take time the roots like I said like I already showed you are coming out but you would not call this a pot full of roots most Hoya I've said only a thousand times on the channel do not need to fill an entire pot with roots to start growing this is just one more example in my collection out of hundreds that have proven that so now that this is getting going it's going to grow well um, it's friends in the the tent are doing quite well under the same circumstances of getting transplanted taking a minute to get going and then taking off so there we go I realize you may be newer to the channel or you might be brand new if you just saw my orchid unboxing video and by the way if you did and you know something about or orchids which I don't thank you so much for being kind in my ignorance and educating me uh, a little bit about orchids until the other day I did not know that orchids is not the genus <laughs> I thought orchid was the genus and y'all were very kind to teach me the progression of that and I won't get into it now but but that was really sweet of you to do that but we are told over and over and over again that Hoya are so slow to grow they just sit there in the pot um, do you remember what was his name Nick at Philly foliage uh, his old apartment he had just dozens of Hoya two leaf cutting three leaves uh, you know two nodes doing nothing video after video after month after year and years in some cases and then he moved and he got much better lighting for his Hoyas and all of a sudden they were growing like magic that has been my experience with the vast majority of Hoya that I grow always exceptions there will always be exceptions but growth is what I expect when something is not growing for some period of time I get the sense that something is wrong let me show you something that I screwed up this summer if you've been around on the channel a minute you may have seen this one this summer this is species bogar really really pretty plant and I decided to at some point spring or summer I, I don't remember I moved this from my office tent room to bedside so it went from a west window which all afternoon gets insanely bright light during the summer so I have shears pulled to a south window our, t our house is tall and it's kind of like living in a canopy of mature trees so the Sun is much less bright I also put it with a couple of much larger established plants in much larger containers than this one is and I kind of treated it like those that is that's just wrong <laughs> that, that was not smart on my part and I should have watered this a couple of days ago but I knew it wouldn't matter and I wanted to save it for the making a video and today's when I felt like making the video it's Tuesday so it looks looks pretty good right you would not post a picture of this and I doubt very many people would say oh no something's wrong with that but do you see this this is not good this plant should be very firmly in that substrate this is an established plant 
This has been around a while. Excuse me while I pull my stool back up. So I have noticed that the taco test, which, you know, I just abhor that standard, is the standard for this plant even after it's been watered the last few times. Now, some of the top ones are still a little bit firm. That's cause for concern. So it's annoying when people post a picture online and then people who have been around want to look at the roots. But that's what we need to do. And it's just the more time you spend in this hobby, the well, it's inevitable that you will realize most of the problems, I was going to say the root of the problems, but you know, that's beneath me. It is the roots. And so whatever's happening up here is a symptom of the problem. It's like alcohol and the alcoholic, a symptom of the problem, not the problem. Sure looks like it though, but another topic, another time. So what I need to do is get in good example of a leaf that's dying off. So there's a yellow leaf. This is what it looks like underneath. You'll see those kind of dark marks. That's just a little edema. Inconsistent watering is usually how people define that online. You know, obviously I gear these type of videos to a beginner, so I'll go a little bit more in depth briefly on that. When you give the water, the plant, sorry, more water than it can process and transpire. So you sometimes, especially like on philodendron monstera, you'll see those water drops. Uh, that's kind of a dramatic example of it. It will fill up the cells and they'll burst and it leaves permanent damage. It's absolutely harmless. It happens most often in the youngest leaves for me. And then as the plant matures and it's able to take up much more water, um, it kind of takes care of itself. So I don't take it personally or like think I'm doing something wrong. Um, I think when people say inconsistent watering, I automatically feel like, well, I'm doing the best I can. And so I would, I would just say, um, yeah, it's inconsistent watering. <laughs> All right, we're gonna get into this. I will just take this little stake out. We're gonna do a little ceremonial retirement of the butter knife. I just picked one out of the drawer randomly because that is how I use them botanically. <laughs> so I don't know. I'll have a little office party for that. Dear friend of Sober Plant Guy sent me this as a gift along with uh, a beautiful cutting. Um, you have seen many of her plants on my channel at this point. Basically my benefactor. <laughs> <laughs> and a great resource uh, to boot. So I loosen this up on the sides. I don't think I'm going to have to. I don't think that was necessary. You can see that this is going to pull out and give me this as a root system. And those are not Good. Whoops, let me lower that. Those are not good. <laughs> not, not even a little bit. <laughs> I can't, can't even tell you how dry and ruined this plant is. So starting a plant over isn't the end of the world. There's, this is completely healthy, so I'll be able to propagate all of this. Um, it's in no way a valuable plant. Um, I got this as just a tiny little starter. Um, it's been bigger. I've taken cuts off of it. Some of you have some of this plant. Um, but, you know, I was really looking forward to blooming it next year. Starting a plant over that's mature doesn't necessarily preclude that I wouldn't get a peduncle and to have it bloom next year. I've certainly have seen it happen. I have one in my tent doing it right now. Um, but it's a setback for sure. And it's less of a guarantee than it would have happened if I had been smart about what I was doing, you know, changing the conditions of this plant quite dramatically, and then just sort of treating it like it was in a zone of plants that all had the same requirement, which is a goal that I've never exactly achieved, but at least zones in my house have similar needs. The plants in it have similar needs. Um, I just screwed this one up. 
it happens. This very tiny channel of mine that I only started in April just hit 126,000 plus views. And I want to thank you. Not one single person who had one of those views have ever told me in the comments or messaging, whatever, that I'm growing my plants wrong, that I shouldn't be growing them in basalt or terracotta or this, that, or the other thing. I really appreciate that you just accept that I like how I grow plants and that some things will go wrong no matter how you grow them. So appreciate it. Let's move on to one I'm concerned about. This is one that is most commonly pronounced stenaki, and I believe it's pronounced steno, sten, stenoaki, stenoaki, something like that. It's named after, yeah, that was horrible, sorry. Uh, it's named after somebody, and when they use a last name, you're supposed to hit the last name. <laughs> and so I don't think calling it stenaki or whatever I just tried to call it uh, did it couple things about this plant. It's one of the more unusual, kind of like the KSB-01 I showed earlier. This was found on one tree. It was collected after somebody shimmied up that tree. And when the explorers went back, I believe it was Natalie Simonson, uh, they couldn't find it again. Now it's been propagated and distributed and, you know, quite a few people have it. Doug Chamberlain has actually bloomed it and they are a massive bloom. So I don't know that I would ever meet those conditions or not. I don't know. The leaves are quite beautiful, but you know, something doesn't look quite right to me on these leaves with that spotting. And that can certainly indicate a root issue. You can see that in this clear pot, it's, very, very dark, which can happen with highlight and organic material. Um, algae, algae is growing in here. It seems to me that this happens more when there aren't roots to take up the water quickly enough. Now, I, if you didn't see my review of Pure Crop 1 that I did recently, um, my very very lukewarm review of that product. Um, gotta call it as I see it. Um, I had root mealies uh, early this year and it attacked a few of some gifts from my friend Kimberly. Um, Kimberly, I'll touch base on that. Um, of course, you know, the freshest, nicest, some pretty rare plants. And I'm concerned that maybe they just got in here and ate these roots away. It was very, very contained. So I was lucky in that regard, but I have been doing kind of the tug test on this and it seemed firm in here. So I was kind of just keeping an eye on it. It's been going on for a while. And you know, the spidey sense that something just isn't right. I was watering last week and I, I pulled a little harder on it and that happened. That's a terrible sign of root problems. So in some way, the substrate had kind of cemented, maybe the cocoa choir acted as the cement of the concrete and formed itself in there. But if I find anything alive in this substrate after all the money I spent on Pure Crop One and the months I used it, there's gonna be some hard language coming up. So, adult warning right now. I mean, let's take a look at what we have is what I meant to say. I'm gonna do it over <laughs> a bowl. Uh, let's see. Okay, so nothing, no root mealies or anything, that's great. But no, no roots either. <laughs> Just, en just enough roots to keep this plant alive, I would, I would say. And I'm going to show it to you, of course, here in just a second. But, you know, it is such a, a pet peeve of mine when people say, you know, online, you know, someone will post a picture and say, you know, this hasn't grown in six months and it looks healthy. And the response is just always, Hoya are so slow, they take forever, the roots have to fill the pot. I just, I just, I don't think that's 
that's not a great advice. I mean, you really have to find out what's going on. So I have two leaves that look good, maybe in a little bit too much light, maybe not getting proper nutrition because of the root situation. So in this case, what would I do? I would say, there's hardly, <laughs> all right. Yes, I get to bring out my bonsai scissors. <laughs> and for those of you who didn't see the last video, Amazon finally put me in their influencer program. So I have a storefront. You can just click on that link, takes you to an organized little storefront of all the products that I use all the time. Um, there's not, gosh, there's not a lot of stem here. Woo -wee. Let's just take off these roots. I have tried in the past to revive a plant with fresh substrate after cleaning off the good roots and so forth. It, it, just, it doesn't go well. It's just so much better to start from scratch. I, it will try to hang on to those kind of crappy roots rather than putting, I'm sorry, rather than putting on a robust root system. So I'm just going to very carefully, it's holding on to a piece of bark here. There we go. And there's, okay. So there's some under the bark, some quite bright white roots. And I would maybe make an exception for those. Those are pretty good. So that's what we're dealing with there. Not a lot, but again, I have almost, almost no stem to work with. I think that's the first time the camera battery has ever died at just sort of a perfect moment. What I did is I took that little cutting off and what little stem there was, I cleaned it with 3% hydrogen peroxide. Then I rinsed the whole plant off. I put it in a smaller cup here, pinned it down. I'm going to put this in a prop box with a seedling mat. So it'll be really warm, really humid. And I have no doubt that this will take off in short order. I wanna see you again in the next one real soon. Boy, do I have a lot of good videos lined up for you. Bye-bye.